Most people that come here probably are aware that there are pretty high expectations and there has been a good tradition and they would like to follow in that line and be known as one of the great Nebraska Highbacks. Back to Rozier, here we go. We had Mike Rozier, Heisman Trophy winner. He's got the first down, he's on the sidelines, he may break it. He holds the all-time record here in terms of average per rush, total yards, all those kind of things. We had Roger Craig. Tom Rathman. Rathman scores easily. Jermon Green. Here is a pitch to Amon Green, sweeping the near side to the five. He takes it in for the score. I loved watching him. You know, he's fast, he's quick, he was, you know, explosive. And, um, you know, he's someone I idolized. And then, of course, more recently, Roy Heller. Off the right side, Roy getting up the field. Roy Heller to midfield. They've been in all shapes and sizes. Most of them had speed and most of them had extreme toughness. The Ibacks here have been known as the workhorses. Needing to carry that load, you need to be able to take a pounding. Channeling your mind to accept, you know, pain. But at the end, you have to come through. Steady dose of Burkhead. Finds a save inside the 10! Touchdown! You have a good tradition to fall back on. It gives you a, a more motivation to play. It gives you good pride, you know, to take the field. You, you want to be prideful, you know, of your game. Do it. Yes! It makes you kind of nervous. Hopefully you don't mess up. You always got to keep in the back of your mind, you know. You got to keep this tradition up. With room to run, what kind of speed do you have, young guy? Down the right sideline. You know, those expectations you have as a running back here um, are very high. That's where the bar is set, to get closer to that bar and to, you know, try to carry on the tradition. I did not want Mark playing football. I thought it was much too dangerous. Loved watching the game, loved the Bears, but not my child. We had some concerns because we, we didn't think he was big enough at the time. I weighed about 140 pounds freshman year of high school. He knew that he had to get bigger and stronger in order to compete with these other kids. Mark would train at least two hours a day. I can't remember the exact amount of weight he gained. It was quite a bit, though. Yeah, I think was... he went from 140, was it, to 190. He was on the sophomore team. And then, lo and behold, uh, the varsity squad at Stevenson, which is a very big high school. It's 4,500 kids that go there. A couple of the kids' running backs got hurt, which sounds, unfortunately, like a familiar situation that we have here at Iowa. And Mark got his chance. They brought him up as a sophomore, and he never went down. Mark Whiteson with the carry, touchdown, Stevenson. The first time I became aware of Mark Weisman was uh, Bill Mitz, who was the head coach at Stevenson High School back in Chicago. Coach Herb, he was my recruiting coach. He was the one who recruited me a little bit out of high school before I committed to Air Force. When he said he wanted to go to the Air Force Academy, I was scared to death. I'm thinking, oh my god, then he's going to be I don't know where, and now we're thinking the war, and oh my god. We had a long discussion, Mark and I, and I kind of wanted to make sure as a young man of 18 years old that he understood that you can't just go to the Air Force Academy to play football. You're going to the Air Force Academy to be in the Air Force, to be an officer, and to serve your country for a minimum of five years. After the semester, I found that it wasn't really a place for me. Just over time, you just look around sometimes and you just say, like, I don't see myself being here. He wanted to go to Iowa. He says, I'd really like to give, give it a whirl at Iowa, which is a bigger stage. And I said, well, then go for it. When I got a scholarship to Purdue, I knew that that was my home and that they produced good defensive linemen. I have a couple of sisters and, and brothers that went to IU. I'm the only one that went to Purdue. I was actually more of a Notre Dame fan just growing up and seeing those guys play every Saturday. I'm just trying to take it a step further. Bolson back to throw. The Boilermakers bring the blitz, and they get the sack back at the 40-yard line. K1 Short brought down by K1 Short. Nowhere to go for Green, and K1 Short buries him for a loss. When Kawan's playing his best, he can dominate. K1 Short once again. If he plays his best on a consistent basis, then he can take over a game. No chance at all. 
after his junior year was over, he was projected as a potential third round draft pick. The year before, we had Ryan Kerrigan on our football team. After his junior year, he was projected as a third round draft pick, and he played his way into one of the top picks. It's just not about football uh, and life. I mean, I love it to death, but I didn't think I was ready for the NFL. And obviously keeping my promise to my mother. He had promised his mom that he would graduate, that she would watch him walk across the stage. And if Kawan tells you something, you can take it to the bank. It took a lot to get to Purdue. So uh, just as far as taking extra classes, uh, summer school and, you know, night school. So uh, it was just a burden on me and my mother. I decided to, you know, tell her that on my way to school, coming down here on the road, that I was going to finish school for her. Just kept a promise with her and she was going to be happy seeing me walk across the stage.